Yeah. Okay. Uh, do you mind we start? Yeah, fantastic. Yeah, thanks for the opportunity. Yeah. Uh, is that right? Okay. Uh -huh. Yeah. Go ahead. <laughs> Go ahead. Okay. It's my big pleasure to introduce Jared Alper from University of Washington in Seattle. And uh, Jared will speak about advances in modular theory. Great. Yeah. Thank, thank you for the opportunity to speak here. Uh, so what I'll be presenting is, uh, is basically a, it's, it's a survey talk summarizing uh, many of my research contributions over the last five years and even dating back to my, my PhD work uh, and uh, namely on, on advances in moduli theory and how we construct moduli spaces as, as projective varieties. Uh, and um, if you've seen me discuss some of these aspects before, there's not really much, much new in this talk. I'm really trying to give you a, a survey. Uh, although I hope to mention some uh, newer results uh, near the, the end of the talk. Um, so yeah, let's get started here. So the main question I want to address, uh, this is the central question of the talk, is how do we as algebraic geometers you know, construct moduli spaces as, as projective varieties? And as an illustrating example, let, let's think about how we construct MG bar, you know, the compactification, the Dillian Mumford compactification of the moduli of smooth curves. Uh, and in the, the modern approach to do this that uh, is, is distinct from GIT is in the first step, you show that uh, there is a, let me, uh, let's see. Yeah, that, that you show that there is a, a proper Deleen Mumford stack MG, or sorry, MG bar. where uh, parameterizing Deleen Mumford stable curves. And let me just highlight some of the, the, the hypotheses here. That the fact that it's a Deleen Mumford stack, well, the algebricity is actually not so hard from the fact that stable curves are canonically polarized. The Deleen Mumfordness corresponds to the fact that these curves have finite automorphism groups. Um, the, the hard work goes into the, the statement that it's proper, and that's what Deleen Mumford show in their seminal paper from 69, namely that if you have any family of of stable curves over a punctured disk, it extends in a unique way uh, to the to the to family of curves over the entire uh, curve. Um, so this constructs it as a stack, which which is great. You can work. You can go pretty far working with that. Uh, but we, uh, I want to emphasize that we want them to construct them as projective varieties. And uh, the second step then there. Uh, therefore, is to apply this, this great result of Kiyomori from 95 that just asserts that there's a coarse moduli space uh, from the stack MG bar to, uh, to an algebraic space uh, MG bar, where we've kind of removed the calligraphic thought and turned it into a Roman thought. And maybe, let me be more precise of what we mean by coarse moduli space. This means two things. Uh, first means that pi that this, this map is, is bijective. Um, in, or in other words, that this algebraic space MG bar, its points are in one-to-one -one correspondence with isomorphism classes of stable curves. Uh, that's great. And, and two is that it's, it's categorical. Meaning that, you know, if you have, here you have this map to this algebraic space MG bar, and if you have any other map to an algebraic space Y that factors uniquely and so. And, uh, and so, you know, the, the algebraic space MG bar does not have a universal family, uh, but nevertheless, it is an algebraic space. And uh, the, the whole idea is, well, once we show that it's a projective variety, we can use this information um, we can sort of go back and forth that we have a universal family on the stack. So you can use that fact to prove properties about, about the stack and then infer properties about the, the projective variety. And you could also go the other way, you know, since it's a projective variety of all the rich tools of projective geometry, you have Hodge theory, intersection theory, birational geometry, and some, and some things are like, like the minimal model program at the moment really only makes sense for, for some, uh, projective varieties. Uh, yeah. And that brings us to, to the last step. Is, is the projectivity, and this is really the hardest step. Uh, and, um, and there you have to show that there's some sort of tautological line bundle on MG bar, maybe some combination of the Hodge bundle on the boundary divisor that, de that, that descends 
to this algebraic space MD bar and descends to an ample line bundle. And here there's a, a variety of techniques. I'll highlight these two of Kovar's result in 90 and, and Conover and Harris in 93. And uh, so this approach it has been, has been, uh, has been very useful and, and, and successful to construct many moduli spaces, uh, at least of objects with finite automorphism groups as projective varieties, but it doesn't work for moduli problems with infinite automorphism groups. Um, and maybe as an example is let's consider uh, the moduli, the following moduli problem. We'll take the moduli of, of parameterizing line bundles together with a section. And so this is represented by an algebraic stack. In fact, the quotient of A1 mod GM um, and well, maybe the, the way, a way to think about this is we all know that you know, the scheme A1 corresponds to global functions and the classifying stack of GM, BGM classifies line bundles and putting those two together, you get line bundles with sections. And, uh, and the GM action on A1 has two orbits, you know, one dense open orbit and then the origin is fixed. So on the level of stacks, this corresponds to two points, uh, one open and one closed. And here the open point one has zero in its closure. Uh, so any map from A1 mod GM to a variety or even to an algebraic space must identify these two points because this is really a stacking phenomenon. We have two C points where one is in the closure of the other. And that, and that of course can't happen for varieties. Uh, and so and maybe to highlight here, we see that this is, a, is, is an algebraic stack, but it's not only Mumford and it's not separated. Uh, and there is, there is no coarse moduli space. Um, and maybe I, I, maybe I should go back to, to this result uh, where, yeah, where we had this, uh, this course moduli space. And I wanted to maybe emphasize that the, the Kiel-Morty theorem, this is general result, and not only applies to mg bar, but it basically says that if X is a separated, D, whoops, separated DM stack, then there exists a course moduli space. So this, this result in this case does not apply because the stack is not separated. Once you have infinite automorphism groups that are affine, it's the stack, the moduli stack is necessarily not separated. But we're gonna uh, replace it with, with an alternative notion. And uh, that's a notion I introduced in my thesis uh, called a good moduli space. And so, uh, we define a map from an algebraic stack to an algebraic space to be a good moduli space if the following two properties hold. Uh, the first is that the push forward is exact on quasi-coherent -co sheaves. And the other property is that the algebraic space has the right functions, namely that the, its functions are just the invariant functions. And it, yeah, there's only these two properties, but um, but uh, there's a number of nice nice consequences. And maybe before stating them, let me say these key examples here: that if you have a linearly reductive group such as GLN and characteristic zero, or a torus in any characteristic, and you're acting on an affine scheme, and you take the uh, the quotient stack of an affine by that linearly reductive group, and you map to an invariance, that is an example of of a good moduli space, and it follows directly from the definition because Linearly reductive groups don't have any higher cohomology, nor do affine schemes. And putting that together, these quotient stack doesn't have any higher co coherent cohomology. Um, and, but yet, more generally, if you act on a projective variety, so X inside PN uh, embedded uh, equivariantly, where G is acting linearly on projective space, um, and then you take the semi stable locus. And the corresponding map to the GIT quotient here is a, is a good moduli space. And again, this isn't hard. This, this it follows immediately from the, from the definitions. Um, and maybe I'll emphasize the following two, two key properties of, of these is that they sort of, uh, while they do not, it does not induce a bijection on points like coarse moduli spaces, it's basically as good as it gets. And that two points are identified, say two C points, are identified if and only if their closures intersect.
Um, so there, it does induce, therefore, a bijection from uh, closed points of the stack or, or polystable objects uh, and uh, with, the, with the points of, of the algebraic space X. Uh, and, and this is also categorical. Great, so with that background, uh, I'd like to move into uh, the analogous strategy that we saw with constructing MG bar, but constructing that projective moduli spaces when the automorphism groups are not finite. And we're going to focus on a very particular example, namely semi-stable vector bundles over a smooth projective curve. But these techniques also apply to other moduli spaces of sheaves, to bridgeland stability, to k semi-stable fanos. Uh, but I think before you have a hope to understand maybe those more complicated spaces, having a very solid understanding of this one example. And I think this also highlights uh, how the machinery can be applied. So I'd like to focus almost entirely on this, on the example of semi-stable vector bundles over a smooth projective curve. Uh, and to begin, I should just recall the definition. Uh, it's this, this numerical condition that we say that a vector bundle is semi-stable uh, if every sub-bundle has the following property, that the slope, namely the degree over the rank, decreases on sub-bundles. Um, is, if you're seeing this the first time, it's not, it should not be clear at all that this is a good property, but, uh, but it is, and I, I think what I'll say now highlights at least one of the important motivations of semi-stability. And so we're going to take the phase, the, the, a similar three-step approach to constructing this moduli space as a projective variety. Uh, and the first step uh, is, is written there, so I'll, I'll just read it. There's a universally closed and finite type algebraic stack MSSRD uh, with affine di diagonal parametrizing semi-stable vector bundles um, with fixed rank and fixed degree. And to parse this, let's first take this expression here. What does this mean? It's, it's, it's well, the, the finite typeness and the algebricity really follow uh, from boundedness and openness of semi-stability. Namely, you can show that the entire stack of vector bundles is algebraic, and since semi-stability is an open condition, you get that, uh, therefore, the semi-stable locus is also algebraic, and then the boundedness tells you that it's, it's actually finite type, which is one nice property of semi-stability. And when you're working over a curve, these are very easy facts. In higher dimension, it's more difficult. Um, and then the other property here uh, that is universally closed, this is a consequence of a result of Langton which says that you know, if, if R is a DBR with the fraction field K, and I have uh, maybe a family of vector bundles FK over the product X cross spec K, this embeds into X cross spec R, the statement is that then, and that if this is a semi-stable family of vector bundles, then that there exists an extension which is also semi-stable. And, and, uh, and actually, this result is not hard either. Uh, basically, using the properties of the quote scheme, you can extend it in some way to some family of sheaves. Uh, but it might, the central fiber might not be semi-stable. Uh, so if you, if you look at the central fiber, where I restrict to the res residue field little k, it may have some destabilizing subsheaf. Uh, but you, you can quotient out by that, and basically you just replace F with this kernel, and it makes it a little more stable. And then the hard part of this argument is showing that this actually terminates in the finite number of steps, and you get this, and a family of, of vector bundles where the central fiber is also semi-stable. So this procedure here does not change the generic fiber. And uh, I guess right. so this is just the first step. It took some work. Can I ask a question about this? Sure. Because um, in principle, it's not so clear that what you get this way remains a vector bundle, right? If you do this, so are you- Oh yeah, that's vector? true, that's true. Is that a dimension? Uh, if the central fiber is not a vector bundle, then the torsion subsheaf will destabilize it. Uh, and so this procedure actually will, will correct it and, and make it a vector bundle.
can you uh, control this pr procedure in terms of uh, harder Narasimhan filtration of the central fiber? Uh, possibly, I'd have to think about that. Um, this procedure is related to uh, something I'll, I will mention later of, of S completeness and and uh, yeah, let me. I, I, yeah, I, I I don't know if I can say anything more. Yeah, it's a good question. Great. So moving on, that was the first step. Uh, so the second step is 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 uh, is the following: is that we need to show that there is a good moduli space from the stack of semi-stable vector bundles to some proper algebraic space, uh, and this requires a generalization of the Kielmoy theorem. And this is maybe the 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 main result of the talk. So this is a theorem. That's joint work with Daniel Hopper and Leisner at Cordell and Joachim Heinloff, and uh, from December of 18, and it's, it's characteristic zero statement. And so uh, the hypotheses are X is a finite type algebraic stack uh, with affine diagonal. And the the statement then is that there exists um, a good moduli space with x separated if and only if the following two conditions are hold is that x, one x is uh, what's called theta reductive and two x is s complete. And uh, and is the, right. this good moduli space unique? The, a good moduli space is necessarily unique. That's that's, that's mm -hmm. that, yeah. That follows from the the, the fact that the map is ca it's a categorical map to algebraic spaces. And right. So I I would like part of the goal of this talk is, is to convince you uh, that you can that, that given your favorite moduli problem. You know, with uh, you say of sheaves or or, uh, or of other objects with infinite automorphism groups, that you can actually apply this in practice. That these, I, I will spend a good amount of time defining these two terms, theta reductivity and S completeness, and showing that they're they're quite natural. I will say rather very little on the proof of this theorem, um, other than the following. I mean, this result follows from um, it really follows from this other result I have joint with with Jack Hall and David Reed asserting that any algebraic stack uh, around a point with linearly reductive stabilizer is locally uh, a quotient of an affine by that linearly reductive group. And there, therefore, this gives you a procedure to prove the existence of good moduli spaces because we know affines mod linearly reductives have these GIT quotients. And these two conditions here of theta reductivity and S completeness are, are, are needed to ensure that these, that these local models glue to, to a, a uh, to put to a, a global good moduli space. Uh, and then, so the, the, the proof isn't really difficult. I mean, it took, I, I was after such a theorem for over 10 years. It took a long time be, to, to identify these two conditions. Um, and I also want to emphasize that right now, uh, this theorem is only, is, is only valid in characteristic zero. Uh, and that's, uh, and that's true because of this, this, this slice theorem is only valid in characteristic zero. So one thing I'm working on on now uh, with some progress, but yeah, not not full progress is uh, is, is 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 the analogous statement around points in, char in characteristic P with reductive uh, with reductive automorphism group rather than just linearly reductive. Um, anyway, so this gives us a uh, a separated good moduli space, and so and and by Lenkin's theorem we actually know it, it's proper. Uh, and then the last step is, is again, just like with MGBAR, the hardest step is that uh, is to show that there's some line bundle on this stack that descends to an ample line bundle. Uh, and that's uh, follows from work of faultings. And I, and I will say a few words of how that, how, how that argument goes. Um, 
But first and foremost, I wanted to say that this is not a replacement of GIT. GIT is an amazing machinery. It's a beautiful piece of mathematics. It's, it's been wildly successful, not just to construct these spaces, but also study them. This is just an alternative strategy. And, uh, and it's especially useful in some cases where GIT doesn't apply. So it may, it may, it's useful, say, when uh, if there is no quotient presentation. So for instance, in bridge stability, there's not really a candidate in many cases of, of where you would apply the GIT argument. Uh, and it's also useful um, when the, if the GIT com stability com computations are very hard. In the case of semi-stable vector bundles, the GIT works out very nicely. And so this is just an alternative perspective. Great, so I, now I would like to, uh, yeah, I'd like to explain that the hypothesis of, of, of this theorem. So I, I've, stated, I've stated it again here. And so I'm, I'm, I'm trying to explain these two terms, theta reductivity and S-completeness. And for that, I'm gonna need to take some time and introduce some notation. Uh, and before, so that the, before uh, going further, I, uh, this perspective relies on uh, the following key fact and that, you know, maps from A1 mod GM to uh, the moduli stack actually correspond to filtrations of, of a vector bundle. Uh, namely, like, remember the stack A1 mod GM has two points, has one and it has a zero. Uh, one here maps to F, and, uh, and F, F is, is the one you're taking a filtration of, and zero maps to the associated graded. And for most moduli problems, you can really interpret maps from A1 mod GM um, in, in, uh, in very concrete terms, you know, for, for vector bundles or sheaves, uh, or complexes, they're always filtrations. When you're mapping to a moduli space of like a variety, say of, of Fano varieties, then this is what is, is essentially a test configuration. Uh, or if you're mapping to a quotient stack X mod G, this is the same as giving a point together with a one parameter subgroup, you know, just like in the Hilbert Mumford criterion GIT. Uh, and we're going to use the, this way to interpret maps from A1 mod GM. And so this, this stack A1 mod GM is so important that we even introduce this uh, notation theta. So we're going to call A1 mod GM theta. And the other notation I need is the, the standard DVR notation that R is a DVR, K is the, the capital K is the fraction field, little k is the residue field, and pi is a uniform, uniformizing parameter. And we also uh, you know, write theta R to be this, this product. And really, uh, the, the theta red reductivity condition is going to rest on theta r. So here I have this schematic diagram uh, representing it. It's, it's really it's a one-dimensional stack with this co-dimension two uh, closed locus of BGM. And so, uh, so on the left-hand side, we have uh, open immersions. And so uh, like when pi, the uniformizing parameter is not zero, you get theta of the fraction field. But when x is non-zero, x being a coordinate on A1, you get, uh, you get the, 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 the open locus of the, of the DVR, spec R, and these intersect to be the, the fraction field. And, uh, and so with that, we define theta reductivity to be the following uh, definition using the, a value criterion. Namely, any stack is theta reductive if for whatever you have a map from theta r minus the origin into x that it extends uniquely to a map from theta r. And this diagram above it implies in particular that this stack is just the union of spec r along its fraction field, which theta k. Um, and so I'll convince you that, this, that you can check this for the moduli space and semi-stable vector bundles. Um, so what we need to, to show is, well, first of all, let, let's just interpret what is a map from theta r minus the origin into the stack. Well, it corresponds one to a family over the DVR. 
right? Just just the the spec R part of it gives gives me a, a semi stable vector bundle E on X R. That's just coming from the, the spec R, and then on the theta K is is, is going to be a filtration of the generic fiber. So we have a semi stable vector bundle on X R together with the filtration of its of its uh, generic fiber. Uh, such that all, all of the quotients of this filtration are semi-stable of the same slope. And what we need to show is that this family extends, that this filtration extends to a, a filtration of, uh, of all of E, uh, such that the, again, the factors are, are semi-stable. And- How do, uh, I'm sorry, uh, how do we get this condition that the slope is the same for, for all factors? Uh, Uh, do I want to drop that slope condition? Uh, oh, well, I think it's because if you go back uh, to, to this, this, this diagram here that, uh, uh, for these filtrations here that in the case that you're mapping to the semi-stable locus, then these factors here should be semi-stable. Um, so, and so it, so that the close point maps to, uh, the, the associated graded and that is, uh, and that is semi-stable, then all of these factors too are also semi-stable of the same slope. Uh, I'm not sure this is true. For instance, take, uh, say, uh, P1 and uh, vector bundle O plus O, then it has a filtration with O, o of minus one uh, being sub bundle and O1 being quotient bundle. All of them are semi stable. But this okay, okay, stable. maybe you have a good point. And then let me think about that. Uh, yeah, the sorry. Object is not semi stable. You want the graded object to be semi stable also. So all those graded pieces have to have the same mu. Ah, okay. That's a good point, thanks. Right, so the graded pieces all have this, because, because the entire direct sum is semi-stable. Exactly. Yeah, right, okay, okay. So there's not a problem here. Right, so, 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 so going back, we, we, we want to extend this filtration of the generic fiber to a filtration of the entire family. And basically, uh, the properness of, of quote implies there exists some extension, uh, E, say E bar, some filtration. And so what all you need to show is that its factors are are semi-stable, and uh, and but 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 flatness, um, but since the slope is is constant in, in flat families, implies that the slope. So if I have if I if I look at one of these factors e i, uh, one of the terms of the filtration e i, and if I look at its special fiber, then it's, that slope is the same as the generic fiber. And since all of these, uh, e, since all of the special fibers are inside of, of the special fiber of E, remember I started with a, an entire family E over XR, that was semi-stable. So this is semi-stable. So, and, and since they have the same slope, that implies that the sub-bundle is semi-stable. And therefore that it's, and therefore that the quotients are also semi-stable. All right, so this is a, a, a natural condition that's not hard to check in, in this case. Uh, maybe I should go on to this other notion of S-completeness. Okay, so asking. let me remind you again what, what our, our theorem is. We need these two conditions, theta reductivity and S-completeness. And S-completeness is gonna be a similar value of criterion. Uh, and again, I have the same notation for, uh, for the DVR, fraction field, and residue field. And I introduce the following gadget here. 
this quotient stack st bar r. And okay, so this is really a mouthful here. So it's the spectrum of of the DVR adjoining with two variables, and then you mod out by their product minus the uniformizing parameter pi. And you take a G, the GM action where S has weight one and T has weight minus one. This seems really complicated, but it's just a local model of the, of, of the usual uh, uh, of, of A2 mod GM with one, the one minus one action, where you know, this has like the orbits are, are hyperbolas, but then there's these, these special orbits, which are uh, the three, uh, orbits that whose union is the two, the, the two axes. Uh, and again, let, let's, that sense, yeah, let, let's parse what this stack is. It's again, it's, it's a quotient of a two dimensional thing by, by GM. Uh, and, uh, if you, if you look at, let's look at the complement of where say S is non-zero. So once S is non-zero, that means you can invert S so that T is just pi over S. Uh, and so that you just have spec of R adjoined S with S inverted, and then you're modding out by the GM that moves the S around. So what you just have is spec R. And the same with what, when, you, when you invert T. And, but on the other hand, if you look at where S or T vanish, you, you get the axes, which are these A1 mod GMs that correspond when you're mapping uh, to filtrations, when you map to the moduli space. Um, and, uh, Right, so now the, the S completeness is, is the following, that the stack is S complete if whenever you have a map from ST bar R minus the origin into the stack, and remember by, by this uh, diagram above, this is just the union of spec R and spec K, spec R. It's, it's the non-separated affine line uh, yeah, localized. And so this is sort of like, a, this is just a stacky generalization of the usual value of Quaternion for separatedness. So if you're on a scheme, you would just say that these two families over spec R are the same. But here we're, ask, we're asking for some extension uh, to S, ST bar R. And, uh, and the, the proposition is that this moduli space of semi-stable vector bundles is S complete. And what this, what this corresponds to is that yeah, again, we have S T bar R minus the origin. This is just spec R union spec R. And so a map to the moduli space here, this corresponds to just uh, to two families over, oh, I was using X, sorry, for the curve. Two families of vector bundles, E and F, such that their, their generic fibers are isomorphic. Again, we can't hope to show that the total, that, 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 that oh, sorry, E and F, oops. Oh. Yeah, E and F, the total families will not be isomorphic, uh, but we'd like to relate their, uh, the, their special fibers. And what this S complete is, the S here is, is, is for Sashadri, and it's similar to the notion of S, S equivalence. Uh, in particular, the S completeness implies that uh, this fact that you can also see directly here that the special fibers here are necessarily S equivalent. Namely, because uh, the special, if you could extend it to a map from ST bar R, you've given two, like two, two, two filtrations that have the same associated graded. So they're, so they're uh, uh, yeah, so the special fibers are, are S equivalent. Um, and, and the, the argument it's in, in general is actually, is not so hard. Uh, I won't, I won't, yeah, I won't give it in, in, in completion, but maybe I will say that actually the construction of, of the family is actually, is, is pretty canonical. Namely, I have a family uh, over ST bar minus the origin cross the curve. Uh, and I just push that forward as, as a quasi coherent sheaf. And, and you can show that it's actually coherent and a, and a vector bundle and then the hard part is showing that the, the special fiber is, uh, is also semi-stable, but that follows from a similar argument as, as I was giving above. And so we have these two properties and, and the corollary from the theorem is then that there's a good moduli space. Uh, I'm sorry, and, uh, can you explain what does it mean? Uh, uh, what kind of data defines a map from ST bar R to, to S tech? 
Oh, to the stack? I mean, oh, from, oh yeah. No, no, uh, no. So maybe to the stack of vector bundles. Yeah. So like, this so there is a nice description. Um, so a map. So like, remember, like a map from. Maybe I'll go back to this one page here. Yeah, so we, we had a map from A1 mod GM to the stack was a filtration. And actually a map, there's a similar thing if, if you map from, uh, let's say, let me erase this. If, if you're mapping from ST bar R to the stack, you know, the, the two axes, so it, it actually corresponds to like a double, so it, it corresponds to a family of, of, of vector bundles so hmm, how do I say this? So these to, to, to vector bundles and maps where well, these are vector bundles over XR together with maps the other way. So filtration is going both ways such that the product, the composition of these maps is given by is, is the product that the product is the uniformizing parameter. Um, and, and you can see that just by sort of the definition of this as which of the two compositions, sorry, uh, you, um, you, you can compose arrows to different Yeah, ways. so I think, which composition? Uh, I think you want both products because these, these should correspond to like S and T. So you want, you want both to go either way to be, be pi. Uh, so the arrows compute, right, in particular? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, yeah, yeah. And going back to the definition, yeah, it's sort of like a family over BGM is like a graded object, and then you're given it this the, the this additional algebra structure where S and T act on these graded pieces with this such that S T is it minus pi. So it's what I was saying there was just yeah trying what follows from its its definition basically. But you can use that in order to understand what the central fibers are and verify that it's actually semi-stable. Right, so now we have uh, a proper algebraic space parameterizing, at least whose points parameterize polystable vector bundles. We'd like to go one step further and get projectivity. And this follows uh, from a beautiful argument of faultings that I would like to explain quickly now. Uh, so this is from faultings paper, stable G bundles and projective connections. And I find well, once I've read Sashadri's exposition of this paper and worked out all the details <laughs> with, with uh, in this group, uh, just recently there was this back stacks project workshop uh, with, uh, that I led with Peter Bellmans, Dan Bragg, Hannah Larson, Jason Liang, Shi Zhang Li, and Thomas Tahaka. And we basically uh, read, read Sashadri's exposition of, of Faulting's paper, worked out the details. And then after that, I went back and read Faulting's paper and it was, it's just absolutely beautiful. But uh, reading his paper before understanding it, I really got very little. <laughs> but, uh, but let me explain this method. It's, it's just, it's fantastic. And uh, so we want to prove that, so we, we have this sort of this, this uh, fourier mckay diagram up here. X, cross, X is the curve across the moduli space, and I have this universal vector bundle. And so I, I need to prove projectivity. What I first need is to first construct line bundles on this moduli stack. And so I, I do the following construction. So I take any vector bundle E on X, uh, I could pull it back, I tensor with the universal family, and then I take the derived push forward. And so this is a, is a, is a complex, a two-term complex on the moduli stack. Uh, and, uh, and I could take the determinant of that complex, which is just the, you know, the, the determinant of the two pieces. And this gives me a line bundle on, on the moduli stack. But it actually gives more than that, namely that if the Euler characteristic of E tensor F is zero, so for all F semi-stable of rank R and D, then, you know, since this complex is perfect, you know, its, it's uh, restriction is, is, is the, the cohomology of the fiber. Uh, and if the Euler characteristic is zero, that implies that, you know, that, the, that these two vector bundles have the same rank. And therefore, I could take K0 to the other side. And so I actually get a map from O to, uh, K, to the, the dual of K0 tensor K1. 
And then taking the determinant gives me a section of that line bundle. So the upshot is any vector model E gives me a line bundle on the moduli stack. But if I had this additional numerical condition, I, I, it, it comes with a section. And, uh, right, and so I highlight the properties uh, here. The line bundle only depends on the rank and the determinant. In other words, this map factors uh, through uh, the growth in D group of, of X. Uh, but the section certainly depends on E. Uh, and moreover, I mean, we want to show that this line bundle is base point free. And the section is non-zero at a vector bundle F. Uh, if and only if that the, the induced map, you know, on the fibers of, of this of this guy is, is an isomorphism, which with, which corresponds to the cohomology H0 and H1 vanishing. So the section is non-zero at a vector bundle F if these two cohomology groups vanish. Uh, and then this is the following is faulting's result on the semi-ampleness of this line bundle. And also gives me gives a criterion for semi-stability. And uh, the vector bundle F of rank R and D is semi-stable if and only if there's another vector bundle uh, on X with, uh, with this vanishing of, of cohomology of H0 and H1. And so this is a criterion of semi-stability. And, uh, and, and it, it, it translates exactly to the semi-ampleness of this line bundle LE because it says that you can always cook up some section of some power of the line bundle that doesn't vanish at F. And the idea of this is, well, it takes some work, but the idea is not so hard to internalize. Namely, we're looking for some E, so we look at the moduli space of those vector bundles. They have a different rank, say R prime, and let's say we could even arrange it to have fixed determinant. Uh, and so we look at the universal family of vector bundles here, E, on this other moduli space, and we consider uh, sort of this, this this natural evaluation map. And, and it's a proof by contradiction that, you know, if there is no such vector bundle E, what you can show is that this image of this, which on fibers are, are just sub bundles of F, then, 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 then generically uh, they destabilize F. Yeah, this takes work, but the, the, the general idea. So this gives base point freeness of some power. Uh, we, we need a, a further positivity result to get projectivity, and that's this positivity statement here. Uh, so the positivity, we want to intersect it with test curves. X is the curve where uh, um, is, is, the, is, the, is the curve uh, defining the moduli space. We're looking at vector bundles over X. But now if I take a curve C, map it to the moduli space, that's my test curve. So such a map here depends uh, is given by a, a semi-stable family of vector bundles on X over C. And, uh, and what you need to show is that the, the intersection is greater than or equal to zero. But not only that, uh, we know that the map from the moduli that, that this line bundle is going to contract S equivalent curves. And what you have to show is that it only, that it only contracts the S equivalent loci. Namely, that C dot this line bundle is, is greater than or equal to zero, and you have a quality precisely when all the fibers of this vector bundle, uh, all these FPs, namely the F restricted to X cross P are S equivalent. Uh, and, and, and let me let's just say, that, again, this takes some work. It takes a lot of work actually, but uh, the main idea is, also, is not hard to internalize. And it has this nice trick that we're testing, we have this family of semi-stable vector bundles on, on X cross C. We know it's like semi-stable as a family uh, over C, but we can also view it as a family over X. And, our, and what you, the first thing you can show is that the restrictions uh, for, e for any given point in X, the restriction of F to C, these are all isomorphic. We want to show that the restrictions to points P are all S equivalent. And there's the first thing is, is sort of like a seesaw lemma is that uh, if F is, is semi-stable as a, as a family of vector bundles over C, then in fact, uh, you can show that, that because the restrictions to X cross C are isomorphic, the restrictions to X cross 
P are also isomorphic. That's the second step. And then you just reduce to the semi-stable case. Again, you, you're viewing S now as a family of vector bundles over C. So you take the relative harder Nerissihan filtration. And then you have to show that viewed as a filtration of vector bundles over X, that it's a slope preserving filtration. And then once you do, and then, and then that, that allows you to reduce to the semi-stable case. Um, yeah, so that, that's yeah, my quick sketch of the argument. Uh, but yeah, let me discuss the consequences now. So the corollary, yeah, of course, is that we get projectivity because just to, uh, to recall here, we have this de determinantal line bundle on the stack. You can just check that, uh, in fact, it's the, the Euler characteristic of the tensor product vanishing implies that the characters of this line bundle restricted to polystable ve vector bundles, uh, the characters are all trivial. That implies that the line bundle descends to something on this proper algebraic space. Uh, and the semi-ampleness says that, yeah, that a high power is going to be base point free, defining some map to projective space. Uh, and the, the, the second lemma, the positivity, tells, tells me that this map is quasi-finite. It doesn't contract any curves. Uh, since both are proper, this map is therefore finite, and that impl implies that the line bundle was ample. Yeah, so this is, this is the strategy. Uh, again, this is not our new result. This is the, the well-known from GIT, but it, uh, I think it, I hope that it emphasizes the machinery. And maybe I'll end by um, discussing one other application of this result uh, to bridgeland stability. And so the setup here uh, is, yeah, I, I'm, uh, X is a smooth projective surface. I take some stability condition given by a heart and a charge, and I have, I have this hypothesis. I need it to be in the same connected component as Giesecker stability. So in, in, I'm only looking at a certain connected component of the space of stability conditions. Uh, and, then, uh, and then because we have Giesecker stability to rely on, TOTA shows a, a boundedness, shows that an openness of, of semi-stability and boundedness of semi-stability by deforming to the Giesecker chamber. And so what we get is that this moduli space of semi-stable objects with respect to the stability condition uh, is a finite type algebraic stack. And that's due both to Lieblich and, and Toda. And the arguments I sketched before uh, imply, you know, with very little change that these moduli spaces are, are theta reductive and S-complete. And so the, the, the main theorem, this joint work with Heimloth and Halpern Leisner, gives me a good moduli space uh, of, uh, which is a proper algebraic space, parameterizing, you know, polystable, uh, original polystable objects. Um, and in some cases, we know it's projective. Uh, it, you know, I said, by and McCree, I mean, th that the second lemma I, I mentioned, and their positivity lemma is exactly that statement uh, applied to all these Bridgman moduli spaces. And when it, X is a K3, they can use hyper techniques to show that it's projective. In other cases, when X is P2 or, or uh, other like P1 cross P1, you can relate these Bridgeland, uh, Bridgeland moduli spaces to, to quiver representations and therefore rely on, on quiver GIT to get projectivity. Um, but there's one other case that I'd like to highlight, which is um, as, as following. So I'm going to only look at, at a slice of this space of stability conditions. It's this two-dimensional plane given by alpha and beta. I, I, I won't go into exactly what the, what the heart or what the charge is, but uh, we, we have sort of this wall and chamber decomposition where there's a, a that where this chamber here is Giesecker stability. What is X it, now? I'm sorry. Oh, X, X is a smooth projective surface. And st yeah, stab, S, stab X is the space of stability conditions. And here I'm just looking at a two-dimensional slice. Uh, and so Giesecker stability is, is an example of Bridgeson stability, but there's also this vertical wall here. And so I'm, I'm going to fix the stability condition sigma on that wall. And, uh, and so this has a, a really nice property that you, you can understand the semi-stable complexes here, namely that 
the, the, the two-term complexes where the kernel is a slope, is, is like a Mumford slope semi-stable torsion-free sheaves, and the co-kernel has dimension zero support. In other words, you know, this moduli space of sigma semi-stable objects contains the slope semi-stable ones. But it also com contains the uh, uh, like direct sums of slope, slope semi-stable with, with, uh, with torsion dimension zero sheaves you know, shifted uh, to degree minus one. Um, and for this particular stability condition, uh, my graduate student, Tuama Stahaka, who I think is in the audience, uh, proved that, you know, it, that the Falting's method for, for projectivity extends to this setting. So he proved two things. One is that this, this moduli space is projective, uh, and it's also uh, bijective to the, uh, to the Uhlenbeck compactification of slope semi-stable sheets. And so this gives another example where, where these, the, this projectivity uh, argument can be applied. And since I have a, a few minutes, let me just explain a, a, nice, a nice feature of the geometry of this space. Is that we, we have, again, we have slope semi-stable, oops, slope semi-stable is embeds into this Bridgeland semi-stable. Here we have this good moduli space. And, uh, and if I, Yeah, so if I take, suppose I take a slope semi-stable torsion free sheaf here, E, uh, and so E embeds into its double dual, and, and the quotient is a, is a rank, is a, is a torsion sheaf supported in dimension zero. And so I, I can shift this or rotate this in the derived category, and I, let's call this T, I get T minus one to E to E double dual. This is an exact triangle. And this is, this is exactly, this is the Jordan Holder filtration of E as an object in this Bridgeland moduli space. Or, or another, yeah. And, and, and actually you can, you, you can then use this to interpret you know, this, what I thought at first was this weird equivalence relation in the Uhlenbeck compactification, where these, if I take two different, say, torsion-free sheaves, E and F, that they're identified in the Uhlenbeck compactification, pi E is identified with F, if and only if these two, if and only if their double duals are isomorphic, and the, their quotients are equal at least in the symmetric product as torsion in the symmetric product of, of X. And we, you can see this because they have this Jordan Holder filtration. And in fact, inside here, the polystable one is, is e, e double dual direct sum T minus, minus one. Uh, and uh, yeah, so just maybe to summarize, we get projectivity here as a result of Trump's Dahaka. Uh, and he's also trying to extend this to, to, to prove projectivity for other spaces like Easter stability or in other Bridgeland spaces. And just as a blatant advertisement, he's applying for jobs this fall. Uh, and uh, yeah, he's eager to do a postdoc. But with that note, let me, let me thank everyone for showing up. Okay, let's thank uh, Jared. Any questions? Uh, can I ask, uh, is there uh, an analog of uh, Falting's uh, criterion for semi-stability in terms of another vector bundle for this uh, Uhlenberg compactification case? Well, the same construction, I guess, allows you to, yeah, you can construct many line bundles on the moduli space, but... Uh, <laughs> No, no, no. Uh, I was asking a different thing. So mm -hmm. in the Falting's approach, there was a criterion for, for a vector bundle F to be semi-stable. So the criterion was that oh. uh, this is if and only if there is another vector bundle. Yeah, F. that's a good question. Yeah. 
So I, I don't know on the top of my head. Or, you know. hmm? Yeah, I, I understand the question. Uh, yeah, the argument might maybe Thomas the Hawk is in the audience. Uh, in the audience, maybe he has an answer to this. Thomas, do you have an answer? Well, Sorry, at least in, the, in the Ulenbeck case, you can sort of leverage the result by faulting by like restricting sheaves from the or complexes from the surface to curves. Mm -hmm. But I don't have a better answer. Right, but you you can't you don't. Yeah, you don't see directly how to get a semi-stability criterion from that. It's worth thinking about, though. Hmm. Thanks. Uh, and, and maybe another question. Uh, so in the general case of a good modular space, uh, do you have a criterion for a descent of a vector bundle to a good modular space? From oh, yes, yes. That's space? actually one of the advantages of having a good modular space, because it gives you control over these things. If you just have a map to some algebraic space that's some like maybe it's a categorical quotient or project or has the right points, uh, but yeah, the, if you have a good moduli space, a vector bundle descends if and only if when you restrict that vector bundle to a uh, any closed point that the induced action of the automorphism group on the fiber is trivial. I mean, this is sort of the natural condition because if you pull a, a vector bundle up from the base, it will have this condition of being. Being, uh, with ha having trivial representations. And so yeah, that, that holds. And there's actually a criterion also for coherent sheaves, but you have to check a similar condition on, on the tor, on, on, on the tors. And for objects of the direct category as well? Yeah, there's also that, yeah. In fact, there was a paper submitted on the, uh, post on the archive maybe on Monday by David Reed, who, who, who gave an extremely general formulation of this that generalized Basically, basically, the criterion I mentioned was due to Kempf in the GIT case, and as a result, by on Nevins for complexes, and and now uh, Rid has, Rid, yeah, Rid has uh, generalized all of that. Yeah. So there's also that you need it's the same statement for complexes. You need the derived restrictions uh, to be trivial. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thanks a lot. Uh, thank you, Sasha, for nice questions. And any other question? I had a short question about these universal properties um, because when you're dealing with uh, with the usual like separatedness uh, and all that universal properties on stacks, um, what you see is that you have an extension of the discrete valuation ring. So it, does that not play a role in, in these uh, theta reduction? Yeah, that's actually something that confused me when we were writing this paper that uh, that's right. And when, you, when you're talking about the value criterion for university closeness or properness, uh, you have to allow uh, at least a finite extension of the fraction field of the DDR. But in fact, and, and for this theta reductivity and that's completeness actually surprised me at first that you don't need that. You don't need to extend the DDR. Is there some sort of easy way to understand why, why you don't need that? Like, is it subsumed in this spec R that's already contained in there? Yeah, no, maybe I don't have a good answer for that. Uh, well, I guess it's because you are extending a co-dimension two. So you basically push forward. Yeah, but I, that works for sheaves. But I mean, for, for sheaves, actually, I think even in Langton's criteria, you don't need to extend the DVR. So something, because of the, the fact that all the stabilizers are connected for vector bundles, that's sometimes maybe misleading for general properties. So the, actually, yeah, Langton's, you also don't need to extend the DVR. Um, but yeah, yeah, that, that's right. Like, because it is, it's different, different value can because it's a co dimension you're extending, yeah, along the complement of a co-dimension two locus. So yeah, as Yu Chen was pointing out, for all these sheaves and stuff, you could just put, you could just take the push forward and show it has nice properties. Thank you. Uh, Jesus has a question. Uh, I went to us at some point, you made a remark comparing it to GIT and you say, oh, it's not a replacement of GIT, but it can help in two situations. One, when there's no clear group acting uh, that can give you a quotient. And then you also said, also when GIT is, I don't remember which word you use, but it was something like complicated. Yeah, when the GIT stability comp uh, computations are complicated. So when, by that you mean that it may not be possible to do them or that they may take forever? Mm. Well, I guess this is an example where, in the, well, for instance, even for MG bar, I, I would say 
proving that, you know, that for a delete, that an arbitrary curve uh, is, is the Lee Mumford semi-stable, like geometrically, it, it is equivalent to the GIT semi-stable is, is, is a hard theorem. And at first, the, the first results only proved it for generically, you know, for smooth curves and then sort of leveraged a, a value criterion to get it in general. And so those, that, that's what I mean. Like those comp still kind of computations are hard. Well, and, the, and for the surfaces case, for canonically polarized surfaces, I mean, the GIT statement by Giesecker, I, I don't think anyone understands that. <laughs> and the computations are just really hard. Uh, and so this gives you, yeah, an alternative, yeah, an alternative way in, in those examples. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Jared. And uh, Marcus has a question. Hi, thank you for the talk. Um, do, what do you know about the bridge in the moduli space on three folds? Projectivity of the bridge in the moduli space. Yeah, I, yeah, I, I don't know. Uh, yeah, I don't know. I, I think that's worth. This is open, right? Because yeah, the, as far as uh, I know, yes, yes, and I, the, I think for a lot of uh, for surfaces too, I think it's 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 open. No, but you 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 mentioned the the paper by your postdoc that was for surfaces, right? Projectivity. Yeah, projectivity. but that was for a, spe a, a one specific stability condition. On, okay. Uh, okay. On the, on the surface, the but maybe yeah. But, but uh, hopefully, yeah, that could be extended to other stability conditions. Is is but there? Yeah, I think the threefold case is completely open. Is 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 there any control what happens with these uh, geometric structures uh, when you cross a wall? Say it's projective on one side of the wall, and then on the other side can be anything or. Yeah, I think that that, that you tr you would try to. I think that's a good approach to try to leverage these wall crossings to, to show it inductively as you as you cross walls. Uh, and I think there's a good chance to sh to uh, at least if you know maybe showing that the some, that the thing on the wall is projective. Maybe that's hard. But what, when you cross the wall, and it, it, it should be easier because then you just have to check like relative ampleness to the moduli space in the wall. Um, so, yeah, I, I think, it, yeah, it's, it's, I, I think it's an, an open, yeah, an open problem and an, an interesting, an interesting problem. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Any other question? Yeah. So I have a question. Go yeah. Ahead. So you said in your main theorem that you construct this good moduli space in terms of, uh, you locally have this, your stack is locally a, a quotient, you said, I think mm -hmm. quotient stack. Uh, so does this procedure also give you the reconstruction of the stack itself by maybe gluing these quotient stacks in some way? Uh, yeah, it, and, I mean, in some sense, because there are they're tau, tau models. Um, yeah, I mean, in some, in some sense, yeah. I mean, again, yeah, that, that, that result implies that any algebraic stack is a tau locally a quotient stack. And I mean, in some in some sense, the way you you, you study any stack is uh, via descent. You know, by definition, you have these smooth presentations that you try to leverage, and you view your stack you know, smooth locally as these schemes that are glued in the smooth topology. But but uh, this result allows you to go to to view your stack. Uh, yeah, to say that it's, that a tau locally, it's glued from these quotients. So I mean, in some sense, that yeah, even it. it gives a, another perspective, yeah, a way to, to view, view these modular stacks. Thank you. More questions? Okay, if there are no more questions for Jared, let's thank him again. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Jared, for nice talks, and uh, you're a champion of answering questions. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks. Okay. So, uh, thank you very much. I finished the quest, uh, the session. Okay. Thanks. Bye. See you next week. Uh,